One of my favorite things to do in Polybridge is to send bikes flying through the air, and in this video, I set out to do just that. Specifically, I wanted to make some sort of fully automatic machine to launch these things through the air. Now, the first idea I had to launch things into the air was to try to make some sort of spin launcher. Now, to power this, I was going to put down the monster truck here, and you can see I'm putting down a custom shape. Now, after putting this in place here, I put the truck right on it, and you can see now, while the truck does fall off, it also did start to spin up the wheel. That was the start of what I was looking for, and next you can see here what I'm doing is adding on some fixed joints and trying to pin the truck in place. And you can see now the power from the wheels is going right into the shape. This wasn't really that powerful yet though, so I went ahead and maxed out the truck stats, and you can see here it's quite a bit faster. This was what I was looking for here, and after that, I just went ahead here and added on better supports to keep the truck down. Even with this though, it was a little difficult to keep it on the wheel fully, but I figured once I had it on my load here, it might slow down the wheel a little bit and calm things down. To do that, you can see here I copied over the wheel I had before, and I'm adding on attachment points into the center of the wheel. Now with this of course, I'm able to start to spin up this wheel, and you can see here how the cables are transferring over some power. This was looking pretty good here, and the next thing I did is just flipped around the monster truck so that it spin up the wheel in the other direction. The speed I was getting on this really wasn't bad at all, but I noticed the cables that were transferring that power were at 100% stress. Turning off unbreakable mode, I could see here they all instantly snapped on me, and that wasn't a great sign. To hopefully make it a bit better here, I tried using more attachment points, but even with this, it still snapped all the cables. Now lastly here, I tried to lower down the acceleration of the truck a little bit, which did actually seem to help out a lot, but I could see here the ropes were still snapping after long enough. Now I thought that maybe if I had another power source dumping some speed into this wheel, it might help out things a bit. Now I got this in place here, but trying it out, things got bad very quickly. All of the ropes on the bottom wheel snapped off immediately, and I didn't really know why. I tried adding on some more cables between these two wheels to see if maybe that balanced out the power better, but all of the cables going to the big wheel instantly snapped on me, and it was just left with the connections between the wheels. Now, once again, I thought that maybe if I added more load onto the wheel, it might slow things down a bit more and calm everything down. Once I had this, I tried to spin it up here, but even this just seemed to be acting weirdly, and I could see the road sheared off, and the whole thing ended up ripping apart. And it was around now, I just realized that if I wanted to keep on braking mode off, it really didn't seem like a spin launcher was going to work. But next up here, I had kind of a funny idea. You could see me building up some platforms now. I was wondering if I could make a fully automatic trebuchet instead to try to launch all these bikes. Now, once I got a few of these down here, I used some cables to link everything together, and and after that, you can see me also using some roads and trying to build up a sling to hold the bike. Now, once I got something that was holding it together pretty well here, trying it out, it did seem to rotate well around the pivot point, and now I just wanted to add in a counterweight. Now, I'm using a custom shape as the counterweight here, and you can see once I got that in place, it kind of ripped itself apart, but with a little more trussing, I was hoping it'd hold itself on. Now, this did work, but the counterweight wasn't even heavy enough to flip this all the way around. Now I figured just to get a design going, turning on unbreakable mode shouldn't be too bad of an idea, and once I turned up the weight of this counterweight a lot more, you could see it really didn't seem to want to get out of the sling. To make this work, I realized I was going to need to brace to a slightly different point than before, and you can see by doing this it releases, but it's quite a bit too early. So next, you can see me adding in a couple extra pieces of steel, and I'm putting it closer to the original point. This seemed to make it want to release a lot later here, and by doing this, I actually got a pretty decent launch. I managed to make it go over the other island, and already with this, I was really liking what I was seeing. One thing I had noticed, though, is that the counterweight was bouncing around quite a bit here, and that meant that there was a lot of wasted energy. Ideally, it would be totally stationary at the bottom if I did this as efficiently as possible, and just by playing with its position here, I was hoping to get some extra energy out of it. Now, moving it further to the left seemed to help out a little bit here, but 
But one of the big improvements I had was getting rid of one of the roads in the sling. This reduced a lot of weight that the trebuchet has to move around, and it means that a lot more speed can go into moving the bike. Now, I also moved the attachment point on the counterweight to the exact center of it, and by doing this, it makes it impossible for it to bounce around and steal a little bit of energy. These optimizations here seem to have quite a drastic effect, because after tuning the position of the sling to get this to release at just the right moment, you could see just how fast I can get this thing to fly away. And while this is good, I am using unbraking mode, and you'll notice I'm stuck at 100% stress. I really wanted my final design to not have unbraking on, so to start out, you can see I lowered the mass of the counterweight down to 20 polygrams. This is quite a bit less than the 200 I had before, and now began a very long process of trying to reinforce everything. Pretty much everything that could have broken eventually did, and after a very long time, you could finally see now I was able to launch the bike at least a reasonable distance up into the air. Now with a bit more tuning on the sling mechanism, I finally got it to release here, and while it wasn't going nearly as far as before, it actually wasn't too bad, all things considered. It would still rip apart though once it finished shooting, and to fix that, what I wanted to do is add on more reinforcements. Eventually here, I got something that was sort of holding itself together, and with this basic design here, I really liked the way I had things working, but I wanted to rebuild here and do it a little bit more cleanly. One of the big changes I wanted to make now was actually changing out my counterweight, so instead of being able to fall wherever it wants, it's going to be stuck in a channel between two blocks. Now by doing this, the position of the counterweight is going to be a lot more fixed, which means that reloading it should be way easier. So with that looking good, I started to build up the top part of the trebuchet again and attach it back up to the counterweight. You'll notice the connection I'm making directly directly to the counterweight is actually with steel and not rope. That's for good reason, because I want to make sure the whole mechanism is completely rigid so that if I pull up the counterweight, it automatically is going to reset the rest of the trebuchet. And with the back half of this looking good, you can see I added on more steel here and I'm attaching it up to the front of the trebuchet. This is the part that's going to be attached up to the sling, and you can see adding that in now, it's able to fling around, and that's what I'm looking to do. Now to stop the counterweight from just falling as far as it wants, I wanted to add in a block at the bottom that's totally rigid to keep it down. This did do its job, but it also is such a shock force it instantly destroyed all of the steel that was attached to it. Now I thought a really easy way to fix that would actually be to just delete that block entirely, add in a piece of road, and use springs to dampen its fall. Now you can see once I added this in place here, it seemed to do its job now, and the counterweight stayed attached. There were a couple pieces of steel that broke, but just by removing them, everything seemed to be fine, and with this, I wanted to try launching another Vespa. Now, giving this a go right away, it ran right into those custom shapes and ended up disintegrating. To solve that, I just changed the settings to not collide with the vehicles, and this seemed to do the trick. Now, unfortunately though, the Vespa didn't seem to fling around correctly, and I tried increasing the mass of the counterweight to make up for this. Now, it also ended up breaking, though, and the extra weight of that counterweight was becoming a problem. And next, you can see what I did is started to move down the counterweight. This is going to make it pull a little bit harder right away, and by doing this, it should make it fling around even faster. Doing this, though, now got it in away the bike, and it still was just slamming down on its dampener mechanism. To fix the dampener, I ended up just tripling it up here, and you can see now, as the counterweight falls on it, it begins to dampen, but eventually it starts to break apart. Now moving the springs further apart helped out a little bit with stability, but now it was too weak to support all of that weight. So finally here, I just doubled up the amount of springs I was using, and with this, it was looking quite a bit better. It still did like to bend apart a little bit, but with enough springs, it pretty much all got solved here, and it seemed to be doing its job. And finally now, I was able to actually test this thing out, and while it wasn't going nearly as far as before, it really wasn't all that bad. Now I added a couple of blocks to the bottom here, and what these are going to do are hold the springs in place so that they can't get out of the way of the counterweight. This just means that the counterweight no longer could slip out from around them, and it seemed to prevent quite a lot from breaking on me. This was all going really well, so next, I wanted to make the trebuchet even longer to get more speed out of it. After adding out another section here, I rebuilt the sling, and you can see I moved 
back in the bike. This whole system was honestly a lot better than before, and I was going over half of the distance of the map, but also I noticed another problem. As the trebuchet rotates around, it goes a little bit too far and breaks the back side of it. To solve that, what I wanted to do is add on another custom shape, and this time you can see what I'm doing is adding on some springs to stop it from going too far. Now this seemed to do a fantastic job of stopping it, and now with everything pretty much holding itself together, now what I wanted to try doing was working on a reloading mechanism. You can see me deleting off the steel cables on the sling, and I'm replacing them with steel beams. This was hopefully going to keep the whole thing more rigid, but the issue though is that it's so heavy now, it ends up just breaking on me, and I really had no choice but to use cable. That was going to be very annoying to work with, but I figured at least next what I could do is reset the counterweight. Now to get this working, I had on a couple pieces of steel on each side, and you can see I'm using a bunch of hydraulics here, and they're going to latch on these steel pieces, pull up on them, and reset the counterweight back into position. Now testing this out here, it seemed to be working pretty well, but when I tried releasing this, you'll notice a problem. The sling didn't really go around the way it was supposed to, and I was going to need a way to reset it back to its original position as well. This was why I really wanted to get rid of the cables, because this is going to be kind of annoying. To grab onto it, I needed to figure out what position it was coming to rest in, and to do that, I used a couple of steel pieces to track around and eventually find where it was stopping. Once I knew this position, I could make a chain of hydraulics going further back, and you can see here after reinforcing it, this should bring it back to the start. Testing this out though, it seemed to have a little bit of trouble at first, but after moving around the hydraulics a bit more, I actually got something that was at least decent. One of the ropes ended up breaking on me, but you can see here the sling did seem to go all the way back around, and that at least showed some promise. Now by moving these hydraulics further down here, it ended up doing a lot better, and I can see here I was avoiding breaking anything. It was still a lot lower than I was hoping for, but at least the slinging action was working now, and you can see next, I'm adding in another bike. After putting down these roads in a lot of steel, I put a hydraulic on the bottom and deleted off one of these steel cross beams. The idea is that the bike is only going to drop once I expand out the hydraulic, and I can control that using the hydraulic controller. Now, as you can see here, it opens up, drops down, and falls in the catch, and you can see trying to launch this off, it worked just the same way. Now, it did go super far at first here, but I figured with a little bit more tuning, it should get better. Now, I also realized there's really no reason I can't add in a third bike, so next, I just did that here, and after that, I built up a few towers to break down. Now, starting out in the back here, you can see I have a lot of these crates, and easily enough, the first bike's able to knock these down. And after a bit of waiting for things to settle down here, the second bike gets loaded in, and you can see here, it hits into all those refrigerators. Finally, after that, just had a little stack of cones here for it to hit, and with this, I had two successful reloads, and realistically, if I really wanted to, I could stack even more bikes in. Honestly, though, I think three bikes gets the point across here, and honestly, I'm pretty happy with the way this turned out. It's definitely on the slower side here, but it's also a fully automatic trebuchet, so the fact that it works at all is honestly kind of amazing. But guys, if you have any more ideas for what I should make, make sure to leave them down below. And make sure to like the video if you liked the build. Make sure to subscribe if you want to see more Polybridge 3 content, and otherwise, till next time.